Wall Street watchdog has failed Fed's stress test of megabanks as toothless, provides a wake-up call to Biden administration. Dennis Kelleher, the co-founder, president, and CEO of nonpartisan Wall Street watchdog Better Markets, has issued a scathing rebuke of Federal Reserve's so-called stress test of the megabanks on Wall Street, calling them toothless. Kelleher's criticisms revolve around two key points. Uh, the Fed is preordaining the outcome of the test by one, pumping the bank's capital with financial handouts prior to the test, and two, by removing key aspects of the stress test that would negatively impact the outcome. Kelleher writes that the Fed's unprecedented support to financial markets and the economy since last March was $4 trillion and has materially helped uh, bolster bank balance sheets and capital levels. By Kelleher, but Kelleher is overlooking the more than $9 trillion in cumulative repo loans the Fed showered on the trading units of these Wall Street uh, megabanks uh, at far below market interest rates uh, from uh, September 17, 2019 through early July of 2020, the month that the Fed simply stopped reporting this handout to the Wall Street Bank. There's a link in the article for uh, the $9 trillion in cumulative repo loans and a link for uh, simply stopped reporting this handout in that section. This, al this, also, uh, this is also how the Fed has ginned up the test, writes Kelleher. Uh, making matters worse, the stress test program has seriously weakened under the Powell, Powell chairmanship by, among other things, the removal of two key components. The inclusion of dividend payouts and a growing balance sheet. If those factors were included as they should have been, the banks would have materially low, lower post-stress capital ratios. Keller says that the banks, that the Fed, trumpeted the fact that uh, all the banks uh, passed the stress test to justify letting the bank launch a flood of dividends and share buybacks, likely to approach 200 billion and exceed bank earnings by as much as 167 percent. I'll link in the article for that. Um, uh, the the excess or the exceeding of when the banks are paying out more than they're earning, it implies a reduction in capital, making the banking system less safe. Better markets notes in a relative related five-page uh, fact sheet. The fact sheet includes this warning to Powell: History may judge the Fed's decision to deregulate and weaken the stress test as to allow such outsized capital depleting payoffs to be as dangerous as many of the Fed's actions were before the 2008 GFC global financial crisis, which made that financial crisis much worse, if not inevitable, and all but guaranteed the need for taxpayers to bail out Wall Street's biggest banks. This would not be the first time that the Wall Street megabanks paid out more in dividends and share buybacks than their net income. In fact, they've been doing it for years under the un un unwatchful eye of their captured regulator, the Fed. Bloomberg News reported uh, reporters uh, Lisa Lee and Shaky and Nasiri Poor uh, broke the story in June of last year that Bank of America, Citigroup, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Wells Fargo had since 2017 spent more on dividends and share buybacks than they had earned, the reporters wrote. <coughs> From the start of 2017 through March, the four banks cumulatively returned about uh, $1.20 Six cents to shareholders for every one dollar they reported in net income, according to the data compiled by Bloomberg. City Citigroup returned almost twice as much money to its stockholders as it earned, according to the data, which includes a dividends on pre preferred shares. The banks declined to comment. According to an audit conducted by a government accountability office, GAO, those four banks named above that are paying out more to shareholders than they are earning receive the following amounts in cumulative secret loans from the Fed at an interest rate almost zero from 2007 to 10. See chart below. Um, Citigroup, $2.5 trillion. Bank of America, $1.3 trillion. J.P. Morgan, Chase, $391 billion. Wells Fargo, $159 billion. What exactly are all of these trillions of dollars of bailouts to the Wall Street megabanks coming from? You should probably sit down on any hot. You should you you should probably sit down any hot liquids you're drinking before you read the answer to this question. The money is coming from the same regional arm of the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, New York Fed, that bailed out these banks and their foreign counterparties during the last financial crisis. The New York Fed is permitted by Congress to electronically create this money out of thin air. Thin air. Uh, the Fed released a video with senior advisor Steve Meyer explaining how it's done. See um, 3 minutes 42 seconds uh, on the video. I'll link in the article here for that.
In this example, Meyer is talking about how the Fed creates money for its QE purchases of bonds from the Wall Street banks. It works the same way for the Fed, for the Fed's collateralized collateralized loans to the Wall Street. Meyer explains. You you may w wonder how the Fed pays for uh, the bonds and other security it buys. Uh, the Fed does not pay with paper money. Instead, the Fed pays with the seller's bank using newly created electronic funds, and the bank adds those funds to the seller's account. The seller can spend the funds or can simply leave them in the bank. If the funds stay in the bank, then the bank can increase its lending, purchase more assets, or build up the reserves it holds on deposit at the Fed. More broadly, the Fed security purchases increase the total amount of reserves that the, bank, that the banking system keeps at the Fed. Whether the Fed's purchase will lead to an increase in the amount of money circulating in the economy depends on what banks do with the new reserves and on uh, what sellers do with the funds they receive. What the mega banks are doing with a lot of this cheap, no strings attached money from the Fed is to loan out their balance sheets to hedge funds to make insanely leveraged trades in risky stocks and derivatives. Uh, link in the article for loan out their balance sheets to the hedge funds. And exactly what is the structure of the New York Fed? It's one of the 12 regional Federal Reserve banks, but it's privately owned by the mega banks that it's propping up with all these trillions of dollars in loans. There's a link in the article for it's privately owned by mega banks. The largest shareholders in the New York Fed are the following five Wall Street banks, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and Bank of New York Milan. Those five banks represent two-thirds of the eight global systematically important banks, G's, SIB's, and the United States. There's a link in the article for that, eight global system, systematically important banks. Um, <coughs> the other three G's, are Banks of America, uh, share, share owner of the Richmond Flat Fed, Wall Street, or uh, Wells Fargo, uh, a shareholder of the San Francisco Fed, and a State Street, a shareholder in the Boston Fed. The final element of this Faustian bargain is that the New York Fed contracts out of the operations of its bailout programs to the very banks taking money from the bailouts. There's a link in the article for those contracts. Uh, wh what's happening between the Wall Street mega banks today and the Fed is a replay of the dynamics that led to the 2008 crisis. The question is, will the Biden administration take action in time to thwart another economic crash that America can ill afford?